Instead of giving a tutorial or demonstration as I have in the past, I'm going to talk a little bit about action poses and breathing life and motion into your artwork. Our goal is really to have the viewer do all the work. Your job is to take them halfway there. So often, the key to an interesting piece of art is in your suggestions. Your goal as an artist is to make the viewer become interested in the story you're telling in whatever medium you're working in. The clearer your storytelling is, the more interested they will be. We can tell our stories in part through actions and gestures. Hopefully this video will help you select the clearest ways to tell your story and to hook your audience. Choosing the right action pose is something of a knack. The more you look at people and pictures to identify the right spot in the action, the better you will be at quickly selecting the best pose. I recommend sitting outside a cafe and studying the way people move, playing and pausing films to watch certain poses and actions, and looking online through photos to select why you do and do not like the poses you find. The more you do it, the easier it will be to select a fantastic action pose. So let's get started. To begin with, let's look at the invaluable photography of Edward Maybridge. Maybridge was an English photographer who studied motion by using multiple cameras to capture an action in stop-motion photographs. His work was quite revolutionary for its time and an asset to artists. He produced many thousands of images of animals and humans in motion, capturing those subtle poses that the human eye cannot easily distinguish as separate movements. His work makes it easy for us to hunt and peck through a given action to find the right pose that indicates the most animation. Let's take these photographs of a walking man. Here we have a series of 12 action poses, all suggesting walking with a casual gait. But which is best? You want to select a picture that has enough motion in the pose that it causes your brain to fill in the next part of the action on its own. That is where the perfect pose lies. It might sound a little bit complicated, but really you've been studying people your entire life without knowing it. The information is already in your brain. You just need to access it. The sweet spot, we can term it, has a lot to do with distribution of weight in the model and how his muscles are engaged to produce the forward action. In pictures one through four, the man has his weight firmly rooted on his left leg. Picture each one of these frames in your drawing or painting. It's pretty static, right? You can tell he's a walking man, but it doesn't feel like he's actually going anywhere. But look at pictures five and six. In five, he's just touched his heel to the ground and the weight transfer is taking place between five and six. By seven, his weight is already fully transferred and we've hit a boring patch in the action again. Eleven and twelve don't really read so well in these examples because his posture has changed. We're not reading that his energy is quite so high anymore and it looks as though he's unsure of his next move or coming towards the end of his requested action. You can see a distinct difference between 5 and 6 and 11 and 12 in his shoulders, his gait, and the determination in his movement. So, by that same token, imagine frames 5 or 6 in your painting. Do you feel like your brain is filling in the next motion? If so, perfect. Let's look at another example, but this time of a running man. In the side arm pictures here, we can identify that frames 1 and 7 are alike, but on a different leg, as are 2 and 8. Six is also a great starting action. We have that great moment of weight transfer and determination of movement in these frames. At this point, check your model. Does he look a bit more hesitant in one, more determined in another? Which one makes your mind complete the action? Which one makes you really feel like he's on the move with a finishing line of sorts ahead? This is the one you wanna go for. Something else you wanna keep in mind is awkwardness of action. Is the pose going to look good on your paper or canvas, or is the pose, though entirely correct in nature, going to look awfully strange? With running, we can get a little more awkward in frame. There's an awkwardness about pictures 3, 4, 5, 9, and 10. Again, isolate them in your mind and picture them on your canvas. Does it read as the best action to suggest running? Not so much. It could be running in place, it could be preparing to jump, it could be hopscotch, who knows? It's just not clear enough and it looks a little funny. One more thing I want to point out, looking at the bottom row of pictures of the runner, we have several shots that read a little bit awkwardly. 
You definitely want to avoid the two legs being at about the same height so as not to make your model look like he's levitating. Something you can keep in mind is the old animation trick. Picture the subject completely blackened. Can you determine the subject's actions by looking at the black silhouette? If you can, perfect. If not, forget it and try another state in the action. Here's one more Maybridge of a jumping cat. Cat movements are pretty fantastic no matter which you choose, but you can still select the action that has the most energy that serves your idea. Most people would probably choose mid-leap, but again, is the cat running, falling, or levitating? Many of these other action poses could also serve for a pounce on a toy or prey. Which frame best suggests running? Seven has a lot of action, and you can almost feel the cat's feet leaving the ground, even though they're still touching it. Twelve is also great because my brain completes the action and lands those back legs on the ground. Now we'll step away from Maybridge and look at something a little more practical. Every artist's free resource for models, stock photos. You have something you want to draw or paint, and what do you do? You type in some keywords like people walking in your search engine of choice, and it spits out some posed photography. Not always the most natural looking models, but hey, it can definitely work if your friends are not willing to humor you by helping. The poses you choose can make it or break it though, so let's go through a few and determine which are better than others and why. Let's start with the awkward poses. Again, these are all stock photos from a quick images search. Here we have a woman walking, or is it running? Or did she just stop the action thinking she forgot to turn the oven off at home and she's going to dash right back? It's too unclear. Pass on this one. Here we have another model who happens to be a super slouchy walker with a posture that does not suggest confidence and everything about her gait tells us she's moving at a slow pace. Now, if you're trying to convey a feeling of lack of self-esteem and direction in your model, then by all means. But if not, keep looking. Here is a couple walking diagonally, which is an interesting angle to work from, but his straightened, outstretched leg really makes the action look rigid and odd. Again, pass on this one. One more thing to keep in mind. Try not to paint a singular person walking or running towards the viewer directly head on. In life, this tends to make us want to move or turn around to get away. We don't like having someone we do not know come straight at us. So you'll be turning your viewer off immediately and simultaneously boring him to death with your lack of imaginative poses. Not good. If you do want to have your subjects coming at you, group them up and make them interact with each other. There is a massive difference between this and this. Here we're interested in what the kids are saying. Are they coming home from a day at school? Or are they going towards school? What's their story? Why is the little girl in the middle such a poser? <laughs> Just kidding. But here, creepy and extremely unnatural. Look away. Something to also keep in mind is when you are pairing two people in an action. The way they are relating to each other is typically far more interesting than the action they're performing. How are they gesturing? What expressions are they wearing? All of these things tell a story. For instance, this man and woman are out on a stroll. They're not moving quickly, and they're not putting much energy in advancing themselves anywhere. Their bodies aren't that interesting, but they're holding hands and smiling, and they appear to be talking to each other. The viewer starts to question, are they an old married couple? Are they newly dating? What are they talking about? What's their story? Curiosity takes precedence in our minds over the action. It's how we're wired. Always pay attention to how the human mind works. It can take you far in your art. Another quick people walking image search pulls this up. See how these people are relating to each other? Is she his boss? Did he screw up? Her body positioning seems to indicate she caught up and stopped him for some reason, and his hands are up, gesturing confusion like, what? And she's telling him he can't leave early, he needs to finish that proposal before the deadline, or some such. Whereas, if you go back a step, all is well, and their story changes to perhaps friendly co-workers walking down a hall together. Two totally different stories based entirely on action and gesture. Again, here's an indication of boring front-on pose. Two older gentlemen conveying not much of anything here, but if we switch it up a little, it gets so much more interesting. Did they just sit down randomly on the same bench? Are they old friends? 
What are they talking about? Does this conversation happen often? Way more interesting. Your action doesn't actually have to be moving someone in any direction either. Here's a great picture of a girl and her posture and the way she is seated is telling its own story. She's lost in thought, her gesture is gated, which for people who follow body language tells us she's putting up a wall between herself and the outside world due to some level of discomfort. Here it appears that she's marked out her own little corner of the world so she can sit and think. It tells a story in itself. What is she thinking? Why is she feeling this way? The viewer can add their own interpretive spin on it. Remember, any action you choose is there to further the story you're telling. Be certain that the poses are congruent with the feeling you're trying to convey, and you're already well into the making of a fantastic piece of art. I should note, choosing an action or gesture pose is very intuitive. What's right for me might not be right for you. The important thing to remember is that your art needs to reflect who you are as an artist and the energy you're putting into it. This lesson is more of a guide to help you think in a different way than perhaps you were before. The best piece of advice I can give you is to look at your model and see if you feel the action they are portraying in your own physicality. Art is largely feeling and intuition, and if you can hone this skill in helping you choose your components, you're a lot farther ahead than you think. Keep up the great work, everyone. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'd really love to know what you all would like to learn about as well, so please leave me suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy creating!